Good morning, one and all. I just had a look back, and my last State of the Collection video was on December the 11th, 2021. Since then, I've sold a total of 17 watches and bought 19. I used to have 28 watches worn in rotation, a golf watch and a beater. Now I have 29 watches worn in rotation, a golf watch, a beater and an investment watch, which will get worn on special occasions and may well be the one I wear if I do eventually get knighted. Because of the volume of watches bought and sold, I will just pick a handful of ones I have sold to highlight, although you can rerun and start the video and see them all again. I will then take you briefly through the ones I have bought, although I have done full reviews on all of them. The watch I most regret selling was the Dorenzo DRZ3. This was a beautifully well made Swiss watch with a Salita movement. The only reason I sold it was because it always appeared to wear a little large, but looking back I think it was something I just needed to live with. One watch I was pleased to see the back of was my Zelos Mako in bronze. It was actually an excellent watch, but it was my third attempt to bond with bronze watches, but I'm afraid I just can't do it. Another watch I'm not sure I should have sold was the San Martin SN021, an Explorer homage. Well, sort of an Explorer homage. I just found the black dial and painted indices a little boring. Perhaps if they were applied, I may have kept it. I made a mistake when I bought yet another vintage watch, the Le Chamonix Master Mariner. I previously kept thinking I should keep a vintage watch in my collection, but whenever I do it just doesn't get worn. Unfortunately, it was another watch I lost a little bit of money on. Finally, the Zelos Black Tip. The watch was very well spec and the forged carbon dial was gorgeous. Unfortunately, it wore a little bit large at 41mm and it desperately needed a larger lug width. So what have I bought? And in no chronological order. First up is my San Martin Beta, the SN034GA, which I actually bought from Simon over at Watch The Time. It's a cracking little 36mm quartz watch with a Ronda movement. As usual with all San Martin watches, the finishing is far better than it deserves to be for the price. And that bracelet is very comfortable and very well made. After selling both my Zelos watches, I thought it only right I should buy another one. I got an amazing deal on Horizons 39 with a GMT bezel. Like all Zelos watches, it's very well made, very well specced and represents good value for money. It's a 39mm but wears more like a 37 Don't you just love that textured dial? I used to own the 42mm version of this watch. Albeit it didn't have the Cyclops and it had Fotina indices rather than the white ones. I love the watch, but it just looked too big on my wrist. I made a silly offer on the brand new 39mm version, and to my surprise the seller accepted it. I do wish it didn't have that Cyclops though. It had taken me over a year to find one of these, and fortunately the colour of my choice became available, although I probably would have bought any of the colours because of its rarity. It's a 39.5mm watch that fits beautifully to the wrist, and in my opinion, it's absolutely stunning. For some time I had been considering a Yemma watch, although nothing had ever come up at the right price. I was very pleased when this one became available, and more pleased when it turned up and I realised how well made these watches are. If you don't already know, Yemma are a French brand, and they make their own high beat movement. After putting this watch on the time grapher, I can tell you it performs as well as the Salitra SW200, and the positional variance is excellent. Although I changed the strap on this watch, the original was actually very similar. Apparently their customer service isn't meant to be very good, but I suppose that's the French for you. The one thing I didn't have in my collection was a quartz powered holiday watch, 
something I could swim with, but looked nice and summery. After hunting around, I found this 38mm Panzera Aquamarine with the Ronda movement. It came on a rather nasty blue leather strap, but I've since put a Milanese bracelet on it, and I think it suits the watch well. Unfortunately, I've no idea when I'm going on holiday again, and I don't want to leave my rather old, lovable and ageing dog. Other than my investment watch, which I'll come to later, this is one of my pride and joys, the Christopher Ward Sapphire, with its smoke sapphire dial and case back. It is 40mm, has a Solitra SW200 movement in it, and a fantastic bracelet, and that light catcher case matches up to any luxury branded watch out there. Like buses, Yemma watches come in pairs, or well, sort of. Shortly after purchasing the Flygraph, this Navy Graph became available at a very reasonable price. What's more, it was almost new. Unfortunately, there was a problem with the crown engagement, but I've since managed to rectify that issue. I just love the vintage aesthetics this watch offers, and always enjoy wearing it. Hands up, I bought this because of the price and the spec. It isn't normally the style of watch that I'd buy. It is 500 meter water resistant, has a Solita movement. There is a scratch resistant coating. The bracelet is excellent. The dial fully loomed. And of course, it has an AR coated sapphire. Shortly after buying it, I listed it on eBay. But before anyone had time to buy it, I bonded with the watch. And now I really like wearing it. There's a lesson to be learned here though. Although I've previously owned Tissot watches before, I've never owned an automatic version. To be honest, I'm not a great lover of most of their designs, but I think this Couturier looks unusual and quite stunning. I changed the strap for this one, which incidentally has curved ends. The watch's highlight is its extremely accurate Powermatic 80 movement with its 80 hours of power reserve. When I bought this Axios Pathfinder, I couldn't make up my mind if I liked it or not. I knew it would be very well made, as all the reviews on YouTube were excellent. When it turned up, I was in two minds whether to flip it or try and bond. Fortunately, I bonded. And don't you just love that copper coloured dial? I did have to regulate it though, but that only took a few minutes. With what's going on in the world, I don't want to give this slightly modded Vostok Amphibia too much time. That said, it was great value for money and I do enjoy wearing it. That's enough, I think. I'd never heard of Reverie before, but when I looked at the pictures of this watch, I fell in love. The green coloured galoosh dial is just stunning, and with its Myota 9000 series movement in it, it is also well specced and very accurate. Like many brands, Reverie come out of Singapore. Believe it or not, I picked this up used on eBay for £200. This Nodos Sector field watch had been on eBay for a while. I'd sent the seller a few offers, but he didn't want to budge. Eventually, we did agree on a price though. Well, that was more than I wanted to pay. I'd previously owned a Nodos watch, so I knew how good they were. But I was still pleasantly surprised when it arrived. The pictures just didn't do it justice. And this watch is just gorgeous and it fits to the wrist so well. Believe it or not, the factory regulated NH35 movement in it is actually accurate to two seconds a day. And then another Nodos watch became available, at a more reasonable price. This was purchased from yet another YouTuber, who to be honest, sold it to me too cheaply. This has got a Myota 9039 movement in it. It's got a 39mm case, and a fantastic bracelet. And doesn't that dial just pop? Possibly the ideal summer watch. Only just arrived is my Raven Trekker 39. I bought it from a watch buddy. He had acquired it a few months ago, and I fell in love with its aesthetics as soon as he showed me the pictures. Fortunately, he needed to sell it to help fund another purchase, and that's where I stepped in. Finally, my investment watch. But that doesn't mean it won't get warm, but when it does get warm, it'll get warm with the utmost care. This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual with a 36mm case. It's got the newer 3230 movement, which is a chronometer grade and guaranteed to be accurate within two seconds a day. Because this watch is almost guaranteed to rise in value over the years, it could sort of be argued that it's my cheapest watch, although the initial outlay, needless to say, is quite substantial. 
So that brings me to the end of this review. But my collection will shortly appear in front of you just like magic. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please click on the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comments below and enjoy the rest of your day.